Chuck, we're back. Uh, yes. Explainer video. Let's do one on centrifuges. Okay. Love me some centrifuges. All right. Um, uh, now, is this the one where you sit in a chair and go around, or the one where you mix up, separate your blood in a little? It includes all of the above. Oh. It includes all of the above. So, uh, do you realize that if you have uh, some solution, liquid solution in a bottle, and just set it out on the table, and then some things settle to the bottom and other things in the middle and rise to the top, that is kind of like a centrifuge. A little bit, I guess, you know. Okay. Because it's the, the most boring centrifuge ever. <laughs> it is. Because the denser things go to the bottom. Right. Because you had shaken it up and everything sort of flow, everything is mixed in with itself. And you give it a chance, the dense things sink. We, we, it's colloquially called the heavier things sink. But specifically, it's the denser things. That's, it's not how much it weighs. It's how dense it is. Right. Okay? A log is very heavy. You throw it into a pool, it floats. Right. Okay, so weight is not what matters here. It's density. Okay? By the way, your neighbor will be very upset and will tell <laughs> your parents a that log. you have to come get that thing out. And man, is that tough. <laughs> so, by the way, logs don't float very high on the water's surface. Like, right. you know, night, uh, most of it is below the water. Right. And so it's not like styrofoam where... You know, most of it is above the water, right? So depending on how dense it is uh, relative to water, it determines where it, uh, where it will float, what its floating level is. But it has to be sort of le totally less dense than water. But how less dense are you is what it comes down to. And styrofoam is really less dense. But anyway, that, that's neither here nor there. Actually, it actually is there, but it's not here. So, okay. <laughs> so here's a bottle on your shelf. Okay. That's, that's a passive centrifuge. That is a 1G centrifuge. Uh huh. Think about it that way. Gotcha. You're sitting gotcha. here in Earth's gravity. All right. And in Earth's gravity, which is 1G, it will settle things out at the rate that you see. Okay. So now, how do I create artificial gravity? Well, we do it in space. Well, we can. science fiction does it in space correctly all the time. What do they do? They make the space station spin. So you spin it up. And if you spin, you create like this centrifugal force that you feel as you are out on the rim, and that's basically a centrifuge. All right? So you can calculate what speed you'd have to rotate it to feel 1G. Gotcha. Right? And if you do that and you take out your bottle, that's a 1G centrifuge. That's what you're experiencing sitting here on Earth with a bottle on your table. Okay. Okay. So now, let's rotate you... Faster. Mm -hmm. Okay? Well, the centrifugal force increases, and the urge for the stuff in your liquid to separate becomes enhanced. Mm. Okay? The denser stuff wants to get to the bottom faster, of course, and the bottom means the side that's away from the radius, from the center of the rotation. Okay? Right. So the faster you do this, the better the separation is of anything that finds itself at different various densities. Mm -hmm. So that's what centrifuges are, and that's how they work. And if you have a tabletop centrifuge, like what they use for blood to separate the platelets right. from, the, from the plasma, from all of this, you generally you don't stick the test tube on one side. You need a balancing test tube so that it can rotate smoothly, okay? Right. So that's just to get the physics balanced. Yeah. And so, so then why not do like two tests? Like the spin cycle in your washing machine. Oh, well, <laughs> I, think you I know. forgot all about that. Yeah, you, yes. you, you, you The know, washing it, machine it, is walking down the street to catch the bus. You didn't put stuff in there at, at right, properly balanced. Right. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, no, I just... <laughs> <laughs> So you've seen, just, you've yeah, seen no, some. You've, blah, 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 right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, some washing machines, they're, they're totally ready to walk out the door. Exactly, right. right. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, all right. So, uh, the point is uh, the higher the centrifuge, the more effective this will be and the faster it will take place. Okay? Right. 
And the longer is your radius, okay, at a given speed, the longer your radius, the better, the better the centrifuge. So the centrifuge is enhanced by how fast you're turning and how long your, your radius is gotcha. from the center, center of rotation. Of okay? Okay. So, uh, so there it is. And now, why am I even mentioning this? Yes. We, we use the centrifuge during the Manhattan Project. Because uranium-238 has very different fission properties from uranium-235. And so there's uranium ore underground, and we want to say some of these atoms have 238 nucleons, and others have 235, and they're mixed together. Right. And you know we can't have that. <laughs> <laughs> no, mm -mm. no, two thirty-eight, two thirty-five mixing. Not under my watch. Uh -uh. We need a law against That's that. Right. It's not like I listen. I'm a good man. I'm a good Christian man. <laughs> Pay my taxes not to have no two thirty-eight and two thirty-five mixing up in my town. <laughs> Take that to the Supreme Court. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay. And all I'm saying is ain't nothing wrong with 235 and ain't nothing wrong with 238. They just need to be separate but equal. <laughs> uh, can I finish my Okay, thing? go ahead. Keep oh, thinking of you. All right. I'm sorry. <laughs> now, you can mention, like, there's not much of a mass difference between these two atoms. Right. All right? One of them has like three extra neutrons in it compared to the other. All right? So if you melt the uranium so that atoms can move freely, because in a solid state they can't. Right. All right? And you centrifuge it, the 238 goes to the bottom. And the 235 goes to the top. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what you can do is, you know, is it, is it going to do it perfectly? Uh, maybe it all doesn't go to the very bottom. Maybe it only goes to the bottom half. Okay. So here's what you do. You cut off the half. Now you take the bottom half and centrifuge that. That's right. And then you take the bottom half of that, centrifuge that. Mm -hmm. And you keep doing this. If you do it anymore... We're going to have to put some sanctions on you. <laughs> sanctions. Now, we told you that you could do it for half. That's for energy purposes. Now, you keep on. <laughs> you so, keep putting that in that centrifuge. Go ahead. We're going to destroy your economy. Okay. So, that's why you have centrifuge when you're creating nuclear fission. Fission. Right. Fission. Separation. Right. So, uh, fission bombs... Uh, re re require one specific size uranium atom and not the others. And so you centrifuge it. And so that's why if a country starts building centrifuges, and you might ask, why? Mm -hmm. Oh, we just like centrifuge. That's why? It. We love spinning stuff. <laughs> you should see us at our weddings. We're just spinning plates on sticks. We love spinning. <laughs> And so, so there, there you have it. That's a so centrifu centrifuges are very important for a lot of industrial applications, just to separate out liquids that otherwise um, uh, are fully mixed. And there you have it. That is really cool, actually. Yeah. So a spinning space station is basically a centrifuge. Right. And if you do it at one g, you'll be okay. But if you start centrifuging at like 2G, 3G, like a, like the, if you're in a jet fighter and they do like a, a barrel roll or something, and so I'm experiencing 4Gs, 5Gs, they're basically centrifuging you. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes, it's like I feel my courage separating from my body. <laughs> I feel my pee separating yeah, from my bladder. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yes, yeah, so you can broadly think of increasing the G-forces on something as the equivalent of putting it in a centrifuge. It's precisely the same effect nice. on the thing that's in the thing. Excellent.
Now, nice. by the way, I, I went into a centrifuge at Brandeis University. Okay. They have a little space research zone there. And I, uh, I threw up afterwards. <laughs> just going to say. Yeah, so, uh, well, you didn't do it during, you know. No, no I did not, not during, because that'd be bad. Because yes. if, you're, if you're in the centrifuge and you're, like, facing the middle and you try to throw up, the throw up goes back down your throat. That's awesome. It's, the ah. centrifuge pushes it back. Oh, so, yes. if, so if you're ever in a centrifuge and have to throw up, turn sideways. Oh, yeah. Then well, the centrifuge will go off to the side, okay? I that, actually all. saw that happen, not in anything as illustrious as Brandeis University, uh, but it was the University of Great Adventure. Oh, in, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Were and, you a junior or a senior when this happened? Was you? No. <laughs> and yeah, it was like this. It's this thing you get into and you stick to the walls as it spins around. It'll spin around. And and I had a very light lunch and I thought I was good. So I so I would count as the inadequate stuff instead of the right <laughs> stuff for a space exploration there. So um, anyhow, that's all we have time for, Chuck. Oh man, okay, that was fun. Uh, all right, centrifuges and life. That's what that is. All right, that's Chuck Nice. I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson. Keep looking up. <laughs>